Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another show. My name is Tyler, and I'm here with Matt, the founder of ORATS. Uh, ORATS is an options analytics platform built on top of over 15 years of historical options data. And our dashboard is integrated with Tradier, meaning you can research and discover trades on our platform and then seamlessly send them through to your Tradier brokerage account. So last week on the show, uh, we discussed how we calculated uh, how we calculate our earnings indicators. And today we'll look at some of our volatility indicators and how you can use them in the stock scanner, a trade builder, and our API uh, to help us find a trade for this week. Matt, if you're ready, do you want to get us started by reviewing our portfolio so far? Uh, yeah, we didn't have any trades last week, but we've been uh, been doing really well. Um, I think we're like seven of nine, um, if I'm not mistaken. But we'll get a trade today. Um, so yeah, um, what are we talking about today, Tyler? Yeah, we have um, a lot of implied volatility and historical volatility indicators in our data that we make accessible through our API. And we, we teach them uh, on our university. And then we have them all here in the dashboard as well, available in our stock scanner, uh, in our custom back tester, uh, and a lot of places for you to use. So we, we come up with implied volatility indicators, uh, ratios to moving averages, and um, hit ratios to historical volatility, and a bunch of things that you can use um, to help you make a trade. Cool, and we have this indicator search bar as well. Um, what I want to talk about maybe is my uh, my favorite. It's just good old fashioned uh, historical volatility uh, versus implied volatility. Um, and so uh, let's just get, let's get a better look here. I just happen to have IWM up the uh, Russell two thousand typical ETF. So in our graph that we have, our default graph for the trade builder here, so we're in the trade builder, is the implied volatility in blue and the magenta is a historical volatility. And we use um, a Parkinson method that uses open, high, low, close um, for the historical volatility. So historical volatility is how much the stock moves uh, during the day, and and if you're buying an option, you want uh, usually you want a higher volatility so you have a better chance of getting in in the money, uh, staying there and uh, expiring there, uh, so it makes your options more valuable. So what we like to find if, um, if we're selling volatility is where the implied volatility is very much above the historical volatility. And when you're buying, you want the historical volatility above implied. So it implied, um, this is IWM, and and it, it I don't see much going on here. As a matter of fact, um, you know, it kind of oscillates. But there are some uh, ETFs and stocks that uh, that do have a uh, very much of a tendency to trade on one side, and we'd like to try to uh, like find those today. How's that sound, Tyler? Yeah, sounds good. So uh, that's in our stock scanner, right? We've been using yeah. that quite a bit during uh, during these shows. Yeah, I mean, stock scanner is such a great way to filter through just tons of, of symbols and find uh, the best indicators. So um, what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I've set up a, a scan here, looking for ETFs. I want to sell vol. I want to find out where HV IV is a lot higher than HV. So for implied, it's higher than historical. So uh, what we can do is, is you know, typically I like to uh, get a price, stock price that's not five dollars, so it's above a certain amount. I just kind of randomly chose twenty eight, um, and then um, you know, if you go to implied volatility, uh, since we're going to be looking at implied volatility, um, I like to set a range. Like where would I sell? Like I don't want to sell hundred vol stock; those are pretty crazy. And anything below ten. Um, probably don't want to sell it. So we have our you know, 10 to 50 um, I, I settled on uh, for that. Um, and also um, uh, we're just showing what the confidence is. So confidence is, you know, how many options are there in the option chain where we can 
use to create these uh, at the money volatilities. So I, just, I don't want the confidence. And it ranges from, um, this is uh, from zero to 100. So these are all pretty high that they're finding right now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for our IV. We already have a ratio. We could make a ratio here. So I could make, you know, I implied volatility divided by historical volatility. And then, um, you know, I could display that. But we already have in our ratios tab, we already have this conveniently here. So IV divided by H3. And so, um, I want that greater than 15% edge. So that's going to have a 15% gap. Hopefully when, when we graph one of these, uh, we'll see. Uh, asset type. So if we go to uh, you know, just the fundamentals and asset type, uh, ETFs are five to eight. So we just, ORAS just has a numbering system, stocks, indexes, and, and ETFs. Um, and then I want average option volume very high, five, 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 five. That's, that's, a, that's a lazy man's... Uh, 5,000 or above uh, in uh, that trade. So that, that's a good um, uh, that, that's a good setting that we have in there. So you, you know you're going to have a pretty pretty liquid stocks. So um, and then I could sort this. So I, I sort on IV divided by HV and I want to have descending. Uh, so um, that's the highest implied divided by uh, historical. So let's just let's just take a look at that. So it's EWJ. Um, and let's go to the trade builder. And now, Tyler, could you see what I'm talking about, about the graph of um, yeah, that, that magenta line is a lot, There, there's a much bigger gap in there between the HV and the IV than we saw on that last ETF that you had pulled up, I think it was IWM. Right. Um, so that did this not is have a very large ratio. Yeah. But this is very pronounced. So you can see that gap is what we're talking about. That's what we're looking for. So we're happy with that. Um, I don't like the fact that they don't have that many um, expirations, but um, we're going to we're going to set up um, a scan that will take in all of the um, all of the stocks here. So you have a lot of the uh, you know. Interestingly enough, you have a lot of the uh, EEM, EW, this is, what is this, Brazil? Yeah, Brazil, uh, EFA, and Japan. So the, so what we could do is then go over to the option scanner and take ox. So if you, and number one, if you add symbols, so these are all the, these are all the lists of all of our um, various either templates or uh, option scan, or I'm sorry, this is for the stock scanner that we set up. So here's that ETF IV divided by HV solve all that, that I set up. So that went and got um, our uh, ETFs. And then now I'm going to say, here are the, here are the strategies that I like, you know, of, of all these that I want to look at for these short put spread, short call spread. And then a iron car or is a combination of a short call spread with a short put spread. So why do you pick these particular strategies? It's a selling vol strategy, right? So are we expecting the volatility to, to drop in the next 20 days, 30 days, or go up, or what are we expecting? Well, what we really want is just for the stock not to move that much and for, for these to uh, be profitable. Okay, and we're expecting the stock not to move that much because the ratio to the historical volatility is so yeah. high. Yeah, sorry. That uh, good question. That much means not move as much as the options would suggest. So you know uh, that if you're implying a, a twenty vol and it only moves at a fifteen vol, it's not going to move that much. So it won't get out to these short put spreads or, or call spreads, or it's it's a, a lot less than than would be expected with a higher volatility. Gotcha. So we've just noticed through the historical volatility indicator that these stocks aren't moving as much as the options say they are, which is right. what the applied volatility indicator means. Right. So you're setting up these strategies that are profiting from a neutral move, right? And, right. and that's you know what what an iron condor is typically a use for. Yeah, iron condor is neutral, but you know, like again, 
if there's a really good short put spread or short call spread, you know, I would do it. I would let, do one by one. Or since these kind of move together, I might, you know, have a short call spread in one and a short put spread in another. But it looks like uh, we're lining up for a, um, you know, a good iron condor here. Um, in, in Can you EW scroll down on that edge a little bit? Our our yeah. our faces are covered. There you go. Yeah. So yeah, it looks like there's some good iron condors here. So um, yeah, so you know what we look at. So the price getting a buck. Uh, there's some edge in our uh, distribution edge in our forecast edge. We talked about these in other shows. Um, I set kind of a tighter range around our smooth edge. Our smooth edge is really usually between one and negative one for a lot of these. So you don't want to go out too far to you know that you avoid getting filled. If you if it's too much edge or uh, if it's too little edge, um, you don't want to go that way either. So these ratios, risk to return ratios is one to two. So I kind of like that. I set a range there too in our min maxes here. So I don't want to go too far off, um, you know, probability of profit. Um, so we think that probability of profit, um, you know, we, we think could be greater than that since the implied volatility and uh, the historical volatility are, are off. Uh, deltas are usually, you know, around zero for the, for these iron condors. And then um, thetas, you know, how much you're going to get per day. Um, and then, you know, open interest. So it looks like there's a fair amount of open interest where the break-evens are, uh, what the volume is today, um, and then how wide the market is right now. That's the rest of, uh, you know, I really like our option scanner because it has all those. And you could, you could set uh, the min maxes of, uh, on any uh, one of those things that we just mentioned right there and save it. And it'll come back just as you, as you did it. So, you know, really a lot of saves you a lot of time just to, when you're setting up a stock scan, you put it here, option scan, you, you hone it down and then, you know, just click the button and, um, and, and there you go. So, um, so yeah, let, let's, uh, Let's uh, let's look at one of these. So then I'm ranking these. You know, I like our forecast, a little bit of our distribution, maybe a little bit of smooth. Uh, DTC is good. How much deltas cost? I don't like that that much. Or to risk and probability of profit are kind of offsetting. So, you know, that's how we come up with this iron condor. So let's take a look at it, click on that, and it pulls it up. Um, and then it should, what I like to look at, you know, so this is the the point here. The break evens are sixty four to sixty nine. Uh, probability of profit seventy. So it just counts the red, uh, or or actually all of the. Uh, you can maybe see these probability uh, ranges for each one of these um, charts, bar charts here. So you can you can see it counts up all those, and that's seventy percent underneath that uh, distribution. That's an historical distribution. You can see. Um, you know, calls and puts, and then, you know, going out, you know, how you're going to do every day that goes by, you know, you're going to get closer and closer to this until finally, if you stretch it all the way out, the purple line, uh, the theoretical line is right at the uh, payout picture for the, what, what it looks like at expiration. How's that look, Tyler? Yeah, it looks good. Um, and or do we have any exit alerts that we want to put on this trade? Yeah, so I like to use now for this trade. Um, I, I, I like to have exit alerts. Um, you know, uh, so so how could we find these? One way that we could go to our back tester, and we can um, you know go to the uh, minimize this. So the the cool thing, it's just not my opinion on, on something. I could go to actually like uh, you know EFA EEM, go to these iron condors. Um, and look at, you know, because our in max kind of around where we're doing it. Um, and our deltas. Uh, so it's taking a little bit of time to get there, but we, we look at how, um, you know, in, in our historical back test, we could look at, it looks like they have a problem with the EEM. Um, and we don't have EEJ. But I've looked at that earlier. And 
the the best way to, to get these is about fifty about a fifty delta or so. Um, so what we'll do is we'll fifty percent profit, fifty percent loss. So what we'll do is we'll go to our trade alert and say profit of fifty, um, and same with the, the lot same with the loss here uh, is below fifty. And we'll, and we'll put in our uh, paper trading. I like to put where it's from and what we're thinking about uh, when, when we're coming out with this. Uh, and this is also going to be really interesting because uh, Tyler, we have uh, our, our new, our next thing that we're going to add is our journaling. So um, you want to put in, um, you know, your notes, uh, what you're doing. So this is paper in the tr trader. We, we developed this. So, um, I'm going to give them, uh, let's see what the, you know, I always like to look at what the, the smooth edge is. So it's 80 cents. We're trying to get 82. We're probably not going to get 82. So let's give them, you know, a couple cents and then we'll force it. So we don't have to wait. And, uh, this will be our trade for the week. Tyler. Awesome. Yeah. That trade journal is going to be really neat uh, when that comes out. Yeah. Um, like, did you send that as a forced order or? Yes, I think, I don't know if I have paper trading open at that point. So I think, do that again. Okay. So anyway, that should go in. And um, we'll we'll track we'll track that particular uh, trade for um, for the next week. So hopefully we could continue our uh, continue our uh, winning streak. To... Yeah, that'll be good. And we'll have these scans. You know, you went over the stock scan and the option scan today. We'll have those available on the templates page uh, after after the show, uh, so you guys can go and and see those and trade them for yourself. Uh, I think right now we have we have quite a few uh, stock scan templates and then a few option scan templates as well. So those are just you just click on them and then they'll auto load uh, all the stuff that we've done right into your scanner and then you can uh, make the trades. Um, yeah. So these anyway these indicators um, you know we have uh, we have quite a few of them. You want to talk about our API? That's another way to access it. If you're if you don't want to use the tools in our dashboard. Um, I just want people to know that we have a, uh, you know, this whole thing is built on uh, application yeah, yeah, yeah. programmer interfaces here. Yeah. Um, you go to your, yeah, that one. And, and it's, you can see all the, all the endpoints that we have here um, with the, with the intraday data API and our delayed. Um, and you can access all the indicators, the volatility indicators that we talked about today um uh in in the apis uh, so uh, these are also available on our website uh in addition to the uh, trading platform that we have uh, right so this is the the core data um and you could go in you could test these out um so you could go to core data history and then you know go get these you could go to core data history and go see the documentation um, so we have, you know, all the imports. It's very well put together. You guys done a good job on this. There's some core research that you could read more about the volatilities, historical volatility um, information. Um, you could also go to the university and check out more there. Uh, mm -hmm. Look at, um, you know, volatilities and predictive indicators there. Um, and so here's the X earnings implied volatility. Blog. So you can go to the blog. Uh, take, and I want to forgive this. Go HV. Yeah. So you can just go HV and, and a bunch of these pull up. So these are all the resources. You know, uh, uh, Tyler and uh, you and I have done you know a lot of work to get the uh, the teaching part, the educational part of this. Uh, you know, because there's a, we we're sensitive to the fact that there's a lot of data here, but we also want this to be. A learning experience and you know we, i have a lot of 
experience. I started as a market maker in 1993, and before that, I was trading, and and, and I'd worked in you know, Lehman Brothers before that. So I mean, it's been a long time in the market. So you know, we tried to build out a really good educational tool, and you know, our our, da our dashboard product has you know uh, a lot of it's built on these awesome endpoints, and we've got some great tools, and we've got more tools coming out. Of course, we're all built. You know, we talked about this before, but it's all built around. Um, the, the university uh, and it's built around you know, the four pillars of trading, researching, which is has to do with back testing and using these indicators, these indicators. Implementation has a lot to do with scanning and also uh, eventually we'll, we'll get some systematic uh, automatic trading going for this. Risk management, you know, that's looking in the positions, looking at your, you know, min and max losses and, you know, risks by sectors and all that and then reviews is, is that's our uh, going to be our new thing that's our uh, that's our journaling application so uh, this is how uh orats is, is designed uh we've been working on this for many years but uh you know and then as, as we uh, get all these we just keep improving and improving yeah yeah it's a it's a good show today matt you know i think those volatility indicators are are helpful um especially when trading things like iron condors and um, vertical spreads like that and it that that gap between the iv and the hv is really interesting to see so uh we'll see how that trade pans out uh, and if you guys have any ideas for you know indicators that you guys like to use um in orats just leave a comment and we'll go over those indicators that you mentioned uh and explain them if you if you guys have any questions on them we're we're happy to answer those yeah, it's great to hear from uh, people. So we, we love the comments, love to get in emails. So yeah, reach out to us. Uh, we have chat on our uh, dashboard. We have chat on our site. So you can get a uh, hold of us pretty easily. Yeah. All right. Uh, is that, I think that covers everything for this week, Matt. Uh, yeah. Thank you, uh, Trader, for hosting us again. And we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys.